Chapman as the only strong one as the dirt off of those dry patches were blowing over and destroying the crops on the neighbor's land. And so it's not it's not just one farm that we don't farm anymore, it's affecting the neighboring farms that we still actively produce crops. So you're opposed to the uh, the the um, the Douglas County taking the water out of the valley, correct? Right, and they're not going to Douglas County drop out of that. Okay, good deal. So that's not even real. Is that an issue still? Are they still trying to do that, or are they are they done with that? So, so this is your John Nofsker, right? Right. Okay. <laughs> no, good, good. Guys, I was, yes, I'm glad you called me back. And you're running against Tyler Ratzlaff. You're both in the Republicans and you're running for the Commissioner District 2. So just to kind of get politically situated with the, uh, and, um, and I got, I got 12 questions for you. So, uh, can, can you, can you keep them succinct? Can you keep the answer succinct? <laughs> All right, Summit Lands, you were, uh, one of your biggest accomplishments that you were talking about, uh, and you have a lot more work to do with Summit Land. What is Summit Land about? Summitville? Uh, Summitville, yeah. 1,271 acre Superfund site that is owned by the county. And uh, we are trying to, we can't do anything about the Superfund site itself. trying to figure out how to protect and preserve the old t- 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 two old town sites up there. We're working with the EPA to uh, on all the restrictions they've placed around that area. So we're trying to free up, figure out an economic benefit from that piece of um, super contract. Uh, because right now it doesn't produce any revenue for the county at all. And it's just is it um is it by residential people? Could you turn it into all parkland, or um are you trying to? Right. So we're trying to, it's a balancing act. Have, how can we just turn it into an asset without creating a bigger liability? So, so you've been the uh, county commissioner for uh, four years now. How how has it been? Have you, you enjoyed it? Has it been fun? The just Abraham Lincoln had a quote where he said, like, he wouldn't have done it if it wasn't for the honor of the thing because it was just such a pain. But uh, how how's your experience been? Yeah. And, and we're challenged because the state and feds are so disorganized in their own bureaucracy that we get mixed signals all the time. All you can do is say, hey, yeah, here's some money, go spend the money. And we go, oh, we, there are too many restrictions on the money. We can't do what we need to do. You guys are thinking for us, you know, far away. And you're doing this stuff, but we can't effectively use it. It creates a lot of waste. And, uh, you know, if you let us use it for this, fine. But if, if we have to, you know, but if it's 
not a project that's not sustainable for us because that grant money goes away, and then we still have to maintain whatever it is we built. You know. How many of your have you got your original goals accomplished? What did you initially get in for? I got in. I was pressed in because uh, the county was not operating well at the commissioner level, and some people came to me, several people, and said, "John, we need you to get in there because I have a history of dealing with uh, complex situations and problems." <laughs> yeah. But when I got up there, I found just I mean, right down to the secretary, secretary level. There were problems, miscommunication, failure to communicate, and we've improved it to a certain extent, but we still have, we're just now starting to see progress. I like that uh, Seer, that Rio Grande Seer. At least I like the idea of it. Some of his, um, the video quality of some of it wasn't always great, but... That's a good way for transparency. You ever thought about just putting up, you know, putting your own um, commissioner meetings up online yourself, just uh, throwing them up on YouTube? Well, we do put the, well, I haven't done it personally. The county puts them out there. Anybody can watch them. Good. Uh, good. Well, I, I noticed it. I, I grew, um, I was born and raised in Kentucky, and there's a guy in um, just the fair, the fair board. He went ahead and videotaped all the meetings on the fair board, and um, nobody really watched him, but you trusted it because he put it all out there. So that's um, that's good that you're still doing that. Uh, uh, let's see here. Uh, how how uh, uh, Restaurants. What are your favorite uh, restaurants there in uh, Rio Grande County? <laughs> has the best restaurants. Say it again, sorry, I laughed. <laughs> uh, so, uh, you know, the Colorado Grill. And Monty, I go to all those, uh, those Rios, uh, you name it. Uh, What's your favorite dishes there? What do you order when you go there? Oh, enchiladas. Eat enchiladas. Oh, um, <laughs> everywhere? <laughs> Where's the best? Uh, where's the best cheeseburger? Oh my goodness! Uh, the best cheeseburgers are at uh, Carver's. Sinclair. There's a good. They got some good che cheeseburgers in Sinclair. I don't know if you ever get to Magotti, but there's a new gas station over here um, by Antonito. They got some great cheeseburgers. Oh my god! Pizza. Where's it? Where do you? Where do you get the pizza? Good pizza in Rio Grande County. Good God. I mean, I, I feel like you could judge a, a whole uh, town or city based on its uh, avail its pizza. <laughs> I don't know. Nice. You had mentioned something about South Fork, like uh, Center was the meat and potatoes and South Fork was like the tourist fun spot. What what's all there to do in uh, South Fork? There's a barbecue joint called Two Rivers. That if I'm in South Fork, if I can stop in there to eat, I do. Nice. They got good barbecue, I assume. It's good. I like it. Yeah. Pulled pork and barbecue beef. Is regional, but uh, you know, sometimes I think I need to go to Memphis to get good barbecue. But... Uh, do you uh, do you think it's okay to collect rainwater? I do. Good. What, um, yeah, that's good. I mean, go ahead. Yeah, I, I, I like the idea of rainwater harvesting, particularly on a residential scale. So it's individual places. They got this awesome rain collection thing up here on the National Forest right uh, next to where, where I'm at. And it's a, I feel like there, for the longest time, Colorado had made that illegal. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. And um, 
So, so the Denver, who would you blame with Denver? Is it the the politicians or is it the uh, the the wealthy, the corporations? Who who? That's I mean that's like I mean I'm not I'm you know. In that God, in that God given you rain, if I just tilt my head up towards the heavens and let a drop fall on my tongue, who in the heck would have the have a problem with that? <laughs> That's crazy. Oh, no, I'm, not, I'm just saying Denver. I'm wondering why why did that even begin? It just seems so absurd to me on its face. I don't know. Well, they, in the 1800s, a guy named Kassler and Cronish along the coast of Maine, they were taking It's almost, I mean, part of me thinks about that RWR project, like, I mean, the money you might have been able to use, but once you sold your water rights, that's that's it forever, right? It's like, gone, it's gone forever. Look at the Arkansas Valley and all the melon farms out there. Right. Friends that got paid for their water, you know, the old farmer, the state This uh, this is a I got a question here. It's a multi. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Finish. Finish your thought. Okay. The um, uh, uh, uh just uh, I got a list of like terrible crimes here. I just want to see if you uh, uh, agree that these are all terrible crimes. Okay. So we shouldn't at one person to another person. Nobody should rob, rape, hit, or kill. Or abuse or bear false witness or torture or arson or kidnap or enslave another person. Agree? How do I feel? I agree that we should, that should not happen and we need to deal with it when I'm done. Well, there's, I feel like those are like the major crimes. I used to just like want to get people to agree that, you know, murder is wrong because sometimes, I don't know, the rule of law, do you, what do you think about the rule of law? Do you know about the rule of law? Well, the rule of law is basically we all have to follow the law. So let's say, you know, let's say police officers 99% of the time are pretty good, but let's say one of them happens to go kill somebody. They probably should, you know, be charged and go through the same criminal justice system the rest of us goes through, correct? It should be applied equally across the board. Good deal, good deal. That's, man, if I would have met you 20 years ago, I wouldn't have developed a list of 10 major terrible things. <laughs> But, um, all right, uh, 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 two more questions, man. There's, um, uh, here's an easier one, uh, uh, Grand Theft Auto. There's that Jimmy and uh, Zach Chase. There's, like, uh, two guys that stole a Jeep, and then the guy who owned the Jeep started chasing them, and then there was, like, a big chase with um, the state patrol and, uh, I want to say, the center police chief. Were you, did you see any of that? or how? Ah, oh, you didn't get to see any of it? They got all that body cam footage. You should uh, ch see, you know, check it out. See if you can. Uh, I haven't seen the body cam. What was your take on it? What was the question? What was your take on what you saw? Well, I didn't. I didn't see it. I read it too. So um, my my take on the whole thing. I really like the idea because I can't stand criminals, and I like the idea that the guy who whose jeep was stolen. 
he, you know, said enough is enough. I'm not going to sit here and let you just take my Jeep. And I feel like if he hadn't chased him and he probably called 911 was chasing him at the same time. If he hadn't have done that, they might have got away. And so I feel like we might need, you know, citizens to stand up and do their best and, you know, kind of work in tandem with law enforcement to to get these bastards. Because who the, who the heck wants a bunch of auto thieves in their neighborhood? The, the yeah that's god that's that's depressing there's a lot of that crap in kentucky too meth meth was actually kentucky would always as soon as they would crack down on meth then they would go on the heroin and then they would crack down on heroin then they would go on to the the whatever the next crap that they would dig up I, well, how about just getting people to start making money? I mean, I feel like let's get start some businesses up. You know, most of the businesses fail in a year or two, so you need to get like a hundred businesses just to get you know twenty of them or fifty of them up and going. I'm just saying, I like making money, or I like making money. So if you could get the young people thinking about when they become eighteen and you know being responsible, Jordan Peterson. I don't know if you listen to him much, but he says that America it's not just about freedom, but it's about competency it's about responsibility and competency he, he makes a big deal about that word that competency thing if we're, if we're given all these freedoms they come with a responsibility we don't give one without the other otherwise you break the system right right exactly i mean yeah exactly yeah just oh, i just get to do whatever heck i want it no no you got to make sure you get the food water clothing you got to make sure the systems are working you got to make sure everybody's you know <laughs> Com, uh, last one, uh, poverty. Poverty has um, been a pressing, it's been a centuries long issue, I would say, in Rio Grande County. What are we doing about poverty in Rio Grande County? No, no, that's actually welfare. I mean, even though I'm for social spending, sorry to cut you off, but even though I'm for social spending, welfare is, it, we don't do welfare right. We give it to the poorest of the poor and they live on the damn thing. And I think welfare, the idea of food stamps is that you're supposed to bridge, you know, you lost your job and you need to, you know, uh, you need food for a couple months. It's just supposed to bridge that gap. It's supposed to bridge that gap from the next one job to the next job. So, and then those are the people, those... Well, the, those people are the one. Yeah, they live on the bridge, but the people that need the bridge can't use it because they're all on the bridge. And so the people that need welfare don't get it, and then the people that abuse welfare get it all. And so I do think that we need some kind of welfare reform. The Rio County budget's approximately $20 million a year, just average. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Is it... Million, million dollars and you just have to give it out? Is there a way you can make it into like a job? Because I feel like, what about just having that? You know, the the conservatives usually you don't want like, but I mean, if uh, if you had a job, just say for a day, if you just clean the lot or, you know, go uh, nail some boards or something, couldn't somebody just make 50 bucks? Just, you know, do you have like a, a program or do you have something like that? Because I guess what I'm trying to I'm lead towards is like, shouldn't we have a right to work? Shouldn't we have a right to a job if if we want to go work and you know put our um our sweat and our toil? Yeah, go ahead. But, but I can't make you hire somebody. 
Right, true. Right, no, we, we know about the, the lazy people. The working poor, though, I think, are the people that I care about the much uh, because they're doing what they're supposed to do. The working poor are doing what they're supposed to do, but they're still not, you know, making it. And I think if we made it a little bit easier, then I think it would be all right. I mean, but we're almost all, all there anyways. Uh, uh, man, this has been such a good conversation. Well, I mean, like you said, like it could be education if people just aren't, you know. I, I grew up on a tobacco farm, so I know I can work. There's no, there's no doubt about that. I can, you know, go ahead and just put the time and the toil and the labor into the thing. So I think that there is something about uh, just teaching people, you know, ethics and virtues when they're young. And then if if you don't catch them by the time they're twenty, then God, man, I don't even. What can you do? Well. The, uh, I got one. I know I said that one, one was the last question, but I got one last question. <laughs> I like um, I'm a I, you know, almost I'm I'm a liberal, but uh, I like um, the idea of a pure democracy where we all get together and we make all the decisions. I know that's not totally possible, but I feel like with a three person board of county commissioners, we should be able to get unanimous consent. Do you, is unanimous consent with the three person board of county commissioners a priority? Is that something? Uh, a principle you live for, or it's a majority rule thing. So, like we have three commissioners, and two vote one way, and the other one votes the other. Right. The, well, the let me the, the, unanimous. The reason why I like unanimous. Let's assume that I would say most of the time you should be able to get unanimous. But let's say somebody doesn't want to vote for you, and you start to talk to him, and you start to ask him why not. And it's something little. It's something, you know, they want this thing to happen and it didn't happen the way that they wanted to. And it's like, God, that that's what's holding you up. And then once you talk about it, you figure it out and then you're able to fix that problem. And then, yeah, I just feel like three people, we should be able to get unanimous pe uh, consent with three people. I know majority rules, so on those few issues where you got to kind of have a wedge. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, it doesn't always work. Sometimes, let's spend balance research. Well, other commissioners may not. And so they're, they're all head up because somebody called them up and said, we need to do this or that. And you hold it. we got to think about the consequences of that. If we do this to this person, what happens to the others? You know, where, where do we go with that? Right. And so that's why we, we, need, we need the debate and the dialogue, unfortunately, we find ourselves without the time. We and decisions get made for the wrong reasons and the wrong way. Now, uh, getting first into with that, uh, I, a lot of times I don't have a strong opinion on whether or not we give a conditional use for the bakery down in the Amish community. I don't care, but I want to make sure the process is followed. And that we have a full discussion and disclosure and that we research it. What is it going to mean if we had an extra 100 cars a day to that road? You know, and there's, there's pedestrians on the road, there's no shoulders. That's the kind of thing that gets me. Right. And I have, I have, uh, you know, things are complex. We think, oh, it's just something they told us to do that. That's Summerville. I talk about highest and best use. Well, Summerville was a productive mining community, but they left us with a mess. Right. And, you know, now we've got poison water, we got all this stuff going on. <clears throat> what do we do? 
Well, that's super fun. Do you got? Can you employ people just to clean that crap up, or is that all the feds? We don't have the, we don't have the money. Oh. And, and, the, and the feds came in. They spend two million dollars. The state spends two million dollars a year with a water treatment plant up there. If the county had to pay for that, we couldn't afford it. That would come right out of our road and bridge budget or our law enforcement budget. We don't have two million dollars laying around to do it. Denver can do it. You know, Douglas County can do it. But we're sitting here. We're living off of peanuts, like Daniels County is, we are, and we have to sit down and look at every dime that goes out the door. Right. And so we didn't create that mess up there. Well, what would you like for it to turn into? If you had, like, what if money was no object? What would be, like, the ideal? If what would you... Logic, I would secure the site so people don't get up and mess with the equipment and stuff that's up there treating the water. And I would like to see it be a place where people go and enjoy it for the day. Uh, you know. There's not a lot to do up there, but it's a pretty place to visit, but you're not going to spend a week. And so I, that, that could be a recreation park-like area, if you will. Um, or a, a business trip. Stuff. You could have like a nice business trip up there, too. What's that? I was thinking a business trip. I mean, I'm just uh, thinking both conservative and liberally, so. Yeah, and you say you're a, you say you're a liberal. I'm, I'm, more, I'm a weird duck. I'm a centrist Republican. Uh, I believe in private enterprise. I believe in people having the rights to do things with minimum regulation. But I also know that we have we have to have laws in place for stability and societal health. And so I find myself like, okay, where do we put our money? Where do we put our energy? Or more importantly, what kind of policies do we adopt that encourage a healthy society, a healthy a healthy May, uh, have a, a simple definition for you for liberal conservative. Just sometimes we need to change some things, and sometimes we don't need to change some things. So let's uh, let's keep the things that are working, and then the things that aren't working, let's change those. That's that's my that's my liberal. I'm conservative on some things, school choice and the uh, Second Amendment. But uh, basically, I have a balance. Yeah. Right. And change what we have to do there. But all too, all too often we come up with a fix that doesn't address the problem. It just it just addresses the symptom. So we're band-aiding things. <laughs> and it probably it's makes it worse. But we're not repairing the injury. Right. All right. Good deal, That's my man. I appreciate the conversation. What uh, what are you going to do for the rest of the day? I've got meetings all day on water. Yeah. I'm, I'm just here at some state college. They got a conference going on on water, and I'm having to. All right, good deal, my man. Um, uh, I am going to. Uh, I think I'm a. I don't know if I'll ever see you, but if I get up to Monte Vista, I think I owe you like a twelve pack of pop or something, and uh, just to. Well, you just give me a call and have some tea or I like tea. Sweet tea's my thing, so I appreciate talking to you, my man. Good luck to you, Nofsker, on your Mister Nofsker, on your uh, election. Have a good one, my man. All right. Okay. Bye. Well, you have a good rest of your day. You too, my man. Bye.